Hi everyone, Dr. Habib here. I want to share one of the best articles with regards to the vagus nerve and how it functions in the microbiota gut brain axis. This is a really important area. This is probably one of the most important articles that highlights how the vagus nerve is heavily involved in supporting gut function and how it transmits information from the gut to the brain. So this is one of my favorite articles overall with regards to people that are dealing with IBS or inflammatory bowel diseases like Crohn's or colitis. It really explains the importance of the vagus nerve. It really explains the importance of uh, treat treating the vagus nerve and supporting vagal tone in creating this uh, really optimal space. So this was written, it's called The Vagus Nerve at the Interface of the Microbiota Gut-Brain Axis by Bruno Bonaz et al. And uh, I really want to kind of highlight a few areas here. So in the abstract, they talk about how low vagal tone has clearly been described in inflammatory bowel disease and IBS patients, thus favoring peripheral inflammation. So we know that the vagus nerve is involved in controlling inflammation. And when we don't have good functioning vagus nerve uh, fibers and, and low vagal tone, it allows for inflammation levels to really pick up and, and kick off. And so targeting the vagus nerve, for example, through vagus nerve stimulation, for example, which has its anti-inflammatory properties, would be of interest to restore homeostasis in the microbiota gut-brain axis. We want to talk about where this inflammation and where the stress really comes from, and that's what they do really well in this article. So uh, very basic kind of uh, moments in the introduction that they talk about the vagus nerve, the principal component of the parasympathetic nervous system is considered as the sixth sense. Uh, and it's able to sense the microbiota and transfer this gut information to the central nervous system where it's integrated and then generated to adapt, uh, to generate an adapted or inappropriate response. And the inappropriate response, they say, the latter could perpetuate a pathological condition of the digestive tract or favor neurodegenerative disorders. This is ex essentially saying that if the vagus nerve is unable to actively transport that information up to the brain, then it could result in inappropriate responses, meaning that we're unable to really control that inflammation that's present lower in the body. Uh, really, what it comes down to is stress is stimulating to the sympathetic nervous system and inhibits the vagus nerve system. And there's many different types of stressors. And there, there is some really great information about the biochemical stress. And that's really what they focus on here with regards to microbiome uh, and microbiota imbalances and dysbiosis leading to these conditions or leading to the extra stress that our bodies could be dealing with there. So in particular, vagus nerve stimulation, which is approved for the treatment of depression and epilepsy, we can talk a lot about that down the road for its anti-inflammatory process should be of interest. Uh, vagal afferent fibers are distributed to layers of the digestive wall, but do not cross the epithelial layer. So they go to the cells that line the gut uh, in the intestines in particular, and uh, they don't have direct contact to the microbiome. So they're not directly interacting with the uh, bacteria, parasites, viruses, yeast, worms, whatever is living in our gut. We don't have a direct vagus nerve interaction. Uh, so it doesn't have uh, specifically like, it's not like lactobacillus is talking to the vagus nerve, but in fact, there is a signaling process that gets the signals to the vagus nerve. And that is particularly through the enteroendocrine cells, which are the cells that, uh, some of the cells that line the gut lining. So the enteroendocrine cells are the sensing cells of different hormones and different um, chemicals, biochemical uh, releases from the bacteria in our gut. And we have a hundred trillion bacteria present within our large intestine alone. We have 50 trillion human cells in our body. So that number is really important to understand that there is a really heavy burden placed here on the enteroendocrine cells and the vagus nerve to send this information and to create this balanced environment within our gut these enteroendocrine cells, EECs, interact with vagal afferents either directly through the release of serotonin, 
here's an interesting stat for you about 94% of the serotonin located within your body is actually found within the enteric nervous system within these enteroendocrine cells and through uh, transmission to the vagus nerve. So this is really important uh, and really talks through the idea of gut feelings and really understanding that serotonin is produced in the gut. And that's why it's such a heavy uh, connection to depression and anxiety as well in mental health struggles which uh, activates these specific receptors located on the vagal afferent fibers or gut hormones such as cholecystokinin, uh, GLP-1, peptide YY. These are targeting the brain through vagal afferents which express receptors for these anorexigenic or orexigenic hormones. These are the hormones that dictate hunger. And so we get this information with regards to how we're feeling which dictates um, kind of our mood and our balance. And then we get these other uh, signs through cholecystokinin, GLP-1, peptide YY. Uh, and these are basically driving the mechanoreceptors and the entero, uh, entero uh, endocrine cells that tell us, uh, is there food coming in? Do we maybe need some support there? This is really interesting because this is actually being targeted by some uh, pharmaceutical companies now that are trying to support obesity and, and the idea of overeating. And so the hunger uh, suppression tools that are being presented there is, is a really interesting pathway here, but obviously I've gone off track. We'll get back on here. So these enteroendocrine cells detect signals from the microbiota, from the microbiome through toll-like receptors. And these recognize bacterial products. These are really important, such as lipopolysaccharides, LPS and others. And these are expressed through the EEC or receptors for microbiome metabolites such as short chain fatty acids. So essentially these enteroendocrine cells, these cells that are sensing what's going on at the microbiome inside the gut are, are sensing essentially lipopolysaccharides which tell us about bacterial populations, what's present from a bacterial population standpoint, as well as short chain fatty acids. Short chain fatty acids are heavily, heavily involved in the health of our gut. And this is often what we, we need to really address when we're trying to make these positive changes in somebody's gut health. So in people that are dealing with IBS or IBD, these are uh, a couple of the very important factors that need to be taken into account and often are missed. These short chain fatty acids are produced by the microbiome um, act excuse me, the short chain fatty acids which are produced by the microbiome activate these vagal afferent fibers. So the short chain fatty acids such as butyrate, the butyrate being probably the most important of the short chain fatty acids, it's almost like the signaling mechanism with regards to how much inflammation is present in the gut or how much inflammation, uh, inflammatory reaction is occurring within the gut. And what this does is it activates vagal afferent fibers through different mechanisms uh, while oleate, a long, fat, a long chain fatty acid acts on vagal afferent fibers through CCK mediated mechanisms and butyrate, which is a short chain fatty acid has an effect on afferent terminals directly. So butyrate actually goes directly to the vagus nerve, stimulating it saying, hey, you're good. We, we probably have enough of these anti-inflammatory signals going on and things are working quite well. Um, Lipopolysaccharide also activates direct, uh, directly to vagal afferent fibers at the level of the nodose ganglion. So the, what this is essentially saying is the vagus nerve is constantly accepting signals directly through the microbiome, uh, not from the bacteria directly, but signals that the microbiome and these bacteria are giving off lipopolysaccharides and butyrate levels. And then on top of that, we have these other enteroendocrine cells that are sending signals through serotonin, through GLP-1, through all of these other hormones mm -hmm. that are essentially telling the vagus nerve what's going on. And the job of the vagus nerve is then to send that signal up to the brain, to the central mm -hmm. nervous system. Now, this is essentially what's going on here. We've got these uh, really great uh, image over here that explains what's going on. The vagus nerve over here contains 80% afferent fibers. What that means is 80% of the information on the vagus nerve is coming up from the gut and other organs to the brain, to the brainstem in particular. And there's a reflex over here that actually sends information then down to the gut and other organs through the efferent fibers, meaning that it's going from the brain to those organs. 
only 20% goes that way. It's really, really important in sensing and understanding what's going on within the gut. And this is where we look at the gut microbiota, metabolites, microbiome compounds, and we want to ensure the health of this gut lining of the cells, the epithelial lining of the gut. And this is where the vagus nerve really um, does its really great job. It helps to control inflammation locally, and it helps to actually stop intestinal hyperpermeability. What that means is, as many of you have heard the term leaky gut, the vagus nerve is involved in stopping leaky gut. It actually stimulates the production of the uh, proteins that hold these cells together, the uh, epithelial cells together. So when your gut is leaky, it means things are getting through that shouldn't be getting through. And the job of the vagus nerve, when the signals allow for it, tell it to say, hey, you need to start producing these proteins so that these cells can come and be held together tighter. Again, these are called the tight junctions that need to be produced. We talk about that a little bit further down here. So uh, not so worried about this one over here. But you'll notice uh, right down into the gut, uh, brain to gut axis um, that we're able to limit inflammation through um, acetylcholine. So acetylcholine is the primary slash only neurotransmitter that is signaled through the vagus nerve. And by doing so, when the acetylcholine comes out of the ends, the efferent fibers of the vagus nerve, it actually at the distal end inhibits the release of TNF alpha by macrophages through their uh, alpha seven nicotinic acetylcholine receptors. Don't worry so much about the science here. Uh, essentially what it does is it helps to shut down these local inflammatory triggers, TNF alpha, IL-6. These are some very common inflammatory cytokines and signaling mechanisms and tools that these immune cells use to upregulate inflammation, to say, hey, we have a problem here, we need to uh, fix this problem, send, send help. And when this inflammation becomes chronic and uncontrolled, it's because the vagus nerve is not able to come in and send those signals in to inhibit the release of those uh, cytokines, the TNF alpha, the IL-6, et cetera. Okay, so really, really important that the vagus nerve be capable of sending that information down to help control inflammation. What's also really important, and I talked about this just briefly, is that vagus nerve stimulation increases the expression of proper localization of tight junction proteins and decreases intestinal epithelial permeability. What this means is leaky gut can be decreased when you stimulate and support the vagus nerve. This was actually done through acupuncture as well as uh, through vagus nerve stimulation in different areas. So there's different places where we can stimulate the vagus nerve through exercises, which I talk about in my book, through a lot of different really cool tools that are coming out. Acupuncture, one of the most important and one of the, the most wise of the uh, traditional Chinese medicines has been shown to help support vagus nerve upregulation and to decrease inflammation and to increase tight junction protein production. So that decreases the chances of this leaky gut to occur. Now, what's really important is how that really kind of works. The uh, vagus nerve with enteric nervous system when communicates through its enteric glial cells. So the vagus nerve sends its uh, efferent information to glial cells potentially through their nicotinic cholinergic signaling the same way that the vagus nerve sends its information out. And these glial cells preserve epithelial barrier against uh, these intestinal bacteria or potentially even foods that can create this leaky gut by increasing the expression of tight junction proteins such as zonulin and occludin. These uh, are the the primary proteins involved in creating those tight junctions, holding the barrier together. And thus, consequently, vagal activity provides a protective function to the intestinal epithelial barrier and a low vagal activity makes intestinal epithelium more permeable, thus promoting systemic inflammation and chronic disease. Essentially, if we're dealing with a chronic condition like IBS or inflammatory bowel disease, what we're looking at is essentially low vagal nerve function, low vagal tone, and we really need to work on supporting that. A, we need to eliminate the source of that stress. Is there something going on in the gut from a microbiome perspective? Is there something that's creating a challenge internally at the microbiome level that we really need to address? 
Uh, and that's where stool testing can come in. We like to do the GI map stool test to see what's present within the gut, identify the specific targeting things. Is there too few good bacteria or are there specific bad bacteria that are present or parasites or yeast? These are things we find all the time when working with patients. And then are there natural tools we can use to eliminate those challenges while at concurrently at the same time, addressing that vagus nerve function so that we can shut down the permeability of the leaky gut. This is how we make these ch changes occur. So stress through its neuromediators through CRF, corticotropin releasing factor and uh, peptide urocortin, don't worry about these specifics, increases intestinal permeability and modifies the gut microbiota. Stress changes your gut microbiome. And what we need to do is eliminate the sources of those stressors. What are the foundational things that you can do? Not just the emotional stressors that we feel every day, those do absolutely contribute. How can we address how we handle those stressors, but also can we eliminate some of those other negative stressors as well, okay? In conclusion, what they came to was a reduction in vagal tone reflecting dysautonomia has been shown in IBS and inflammatory bowel disease characterized by a leaky gut and dysbiosis. So monitoring, targeting, uh, and supporting vagal tone through VNS, vagal, vagus nerve stimulation, microbiota modulation, changing your probiotics, essentially prebiotics, probiotics, dietary changes, even talking about fecal transplants. This is an important thing that's coming up recently. Uh, drugs that target the cholinergic anti-inflammatory system are complementary medicine types of ideas with the acupuncture and meditation, hypnosis. CBT therapies, deep breathing, moderate and sustainable physical activity, et cetera, would be of interest to restore a homeostatic microbiota gut brain axis. In order to create that homeostasis, that balance internally at the gut brain axis through the microbiome, we're looking at vagus nerve stimulation and things that are involved in promoting optimal vagus nerve function. This is probably the biggest, most important uh, review paper that breaks down and creates an understanding for why things are happening the way that they are. Why are we going down this path of inflammation and creating inflammatory bowel disease or IBS? This is where we can really make those changes. And when we put it into practical uh, methods over here, what we're essentially able to do is come up with a plan on how to address the stressors, how to optimize vagus nerve function, and how to create really optimal change within the gut of our clients. That's why I wanted to go through this paper. It's so important when it comes to IBS, IBD, and really why it comes down to that gut lining. This also extends further into autoimmune conditions, rheumatoid arthritis, psoriasis, um, we're talking about like some major conditions that have risen in prevalence over the last while. And it's not about the condition. It's about where that condition is coming from. And oftentimes it's some imbalance within the gut. And that's what I really want to help people address. And so this is why I love being able to support my clients that have these uh, diagnoses and come to us seeking those answers of why is this happening? Let's get some answers and let's get targeting why the problem is happening in the first place. I hope you got a lot of info from this. I know it was a lot of science. I'm happy to explain this to those who are interested. Please share this with anybody that you feel needs this information. If you're interested in learning more, go to healthupgraded.com and we can definitely see if we can help you out. Have a wonderful day and we will talk soon.